she's starting work, it would be very premature for her to come out and, and generate ideas. You would want her to study up and be a little bit smarter before coming out with a game plan, though we know Wall Street has been waiting for a game plan for six years mm -hmm. out of Yahoo. Uh, Scott Bowers, so we've got the Yahoo numbers, we've got Intel. I'd like to remind people right now, Intel initially on its numbers was lower. Now it is higher in the aftermarket session, or at least pretty much a rent. Well, no, it looks like it's slightly higher than what it closed at. So which one will really move the markets, if at all, tomorrow? Well, you're, you're talking about a few stocks here that, that really trade in tight ranges to begin with. I kind of like Intel. I think there's too much hoopla behind the Yahoo News with the new CEO. I think once that dies down, that's going to settle back into the range. But, you know, what I like about Intel is what we mentioned before, that yield is fantastic. And also, maybe they've kind of set the bottom now going forward. They've lowered their expectations going into third and fourth quarter. You know, if, if come October when they report, or September, October when they report, and they fall short, then that might be a problem. But maybe they put their floor in here. And like I said, that 25 level, which we dipped just below right after earnings, and now we're trading above that now. That, to me, that's a pretty critical level. I, th I think that's yeah. really the floor here. Very good. All right, uh, Jim Awad, Scott Bauer, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. And, of course, uh, for uh, Shabani and uh, Robert for bringing us those uh, earnings. Thanks to the team. Yeah. So Yahoo just reporting those earnings of beat. And we've got a top analyst to tell you the search firm's biggest headwinds and the number one thing to look for in this report and perhaps more importantly, the next one. Exactly. And advice from an angel. Wayne Angel, that is. The former governor of the Federal Reserve is fired up about Fed Chief Ben Bernanke's testimony today. He says the Fed cannot control the economy, but he'll tell you what he can do in a Fox Business exclusive. And Sue Sylvester may be so tough and mean on her students at McKinley High School in Ohio, but in real life, Jane Lynch is looking to take on what could be this country's next financial crisis. Jane Lynch joining us to talk about why she's so worried about student loans. We know a lot of you are. That's ahead on After the Bell. The Closing Bell is sponsored by TD Ameritrade, where a smart game plan starts with smarter trading tools. What if you had thermal night vision goggles, like in a special ops mission? You'd spot movement, gather intelligence with minimal collateral damage. But rather than neutralizing enemies in their sleep, you'd be targeting stocks to trade. Well, that's what trade architects heat maps do. They make you a trading assassin. Trade Architect, TD Ameritrade's empowering web-based trading platform. Trade commission-free for 60 days, and we'll throw in up to $600 when you open an account. The truth about our taxes. First, on Lou Dobbs tonight, if the GOP doesn't pass the president's plan, will it mean we're all paying more? Congresswoman Nan Hayworth weighs in. Then, can our economy even handle another tax hit? Grover Norquist sits down with Neil tonight. Many investors have already protected themselves and are still buying gold and silver. It's never too late. You need to protect yourself in today's economy. Discount Gold Brokers has gold and silver at the lowest prices in the industry. We will not be undersold. Free silver with every purchase for a limited time only. No markups, no hidden fees. Ask about our IRA specials. Call Discount Gold Brokers 888-200-9001. 888-200-9001. Call now. Introducing Debbie Boone for Lifestyle Lift. Today we're letting you know about Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical process that really does turn back the hands of time. Imagine waking up, going to the mirror, and seeing yourself the way you looked years ago. I'm a firm believer that if there's something you can do to make yourself feel better about yourself, then absolutely go do it. I looked old and now I look healthy, young. I never looked this good. It's the first thing people look at. They look at your face. So I'm very, very happy that I had the Lifestyle Lift done. Lifestyle Lift makes it possible to get noticeable, natural, and lasting results with options that take as little as an hour. And Lifestyle Lift is more affordable than you may think. Call the number you see on your screen right now to receive your free information kit. The call is confidential, the information is free, and there's absolutely no obligation. Give yourself the gift of a Lifestyle Lift. 
Shabani Joshi, technology. Netbooks, laptops, desktops, and we have a tech bonanza. Charles Payne, money. This one had a whole lot of momentum. We want to start to help people make money. Expert insight, smart analysis, only on Markets Now, weekdays. CSX reporting earnings just moments ago and beating expectations. So let's head back to Nicole on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Nicole. Well, you look at CSX, which is in the transportation index. It's had 10 straight quarters of growth year over year. So that's the good news there. Where they are seeing growth is a railroad company reported stronger intermodal and automotive volumes. That's the good news. But coal is where we've seen weakness, and we've talked about that here on the Fox Business Network. And that's where CSX is seeing weakness as well, as far as moving coal. But they do move coal from mines to seaports. That's where they're seeing some slack. But big picture here, they are beating the street with their numbers. You are seeing the numbers after hours here moving a little bit higher. You see revenue as well came in uh, a little below, though earnings per share looking good. And they're also noting that their full year numbers are on track. So that's some good news there as well. Year to date, CSX is up about 7%. Back to you. Nicole, thank you. So Yahoo reported yep. earnings just a minute ago. The stock moving slightly higher after the report, but there's a lot more reaction than just the numbers we can get from Ron Josie. He's Think Equity Senior Internet Analyst. Uh, you've had a second or two, Ron, to look at the numbers, I'm sure. Does any of this really matter now that they have a brand new person at the top here? Uh, parts, I don't know, sixth in five years? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a very good question. And frankly, I think it's nice to see some progress here. 3Q guidance will be interesting, giving Olympics and uh, presidential elections uh, the, the, the impact from advertising there. But in all honesty, with the new CEO, we're likely back at square one, waiting yeah. for a few more quarters to figure out what the strategy is. So I would agree. And with that in mind, uh, the, there was a lot said about this uh, surprise appointment. They say that uh, Marissa was, uh, Maya was brought in to basically make uh, Yahoo more relevant to today's internet users. I mean, is that a, obviously a very tall task, but is that what Yahoo's trying to do? Uh, no doubt. I mean, the one thing Yahoo does has have and has had for some time is the number of users they, they are able to generate on a monthly basis, 700 million uh, per month globally. And, and that's their scale is, is unrivaled to a certain degree. And so Marissa's background is technology, is in engineering, she's so a computer science major, and really has a good track record at Google to bring through, bring that over to Yahoo build products that can get people to come back to Yahoo. But she's never run a, a company, and this is a behemoth, one that's basically uh, been struggling for some years now. So how much is that going to count against her? Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's certainly why it's a wait-and-see approach. And the original question of do the numbers really matter, mm. frankly, I think the numbers were a little bit light. Um, and it's going to be sort of treading water here, here in irons for a couple more quarters until Marissa can I mean, really turn the organization around. Does anything about her appointment make you change your outlook on the stock, or do you have to wait to see some real action this time? I mean, you guys have been five times, six times bitten, many times shy, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, very good point. I really do think it's a wait and see. I mean, as I said, every single quarter they come in, it's anemic growth. It's in an industry that is growing quite a bit. Display advertising is growing mid-teens this year on our estimates. Right. So it's something that we need to wait and see to see how it works. And frankly, uh, for us to change our ratings, well, it would take. Listen, it's not that important, but we're having an argument here at Fox Business for the past couple of hours on air and off about whether she really should at least introduce herself on the conference call today, uh, this earnings call, because Otherwise, it looks to me, I mean, I think she should. I think she should get out there, show some guts, say, you know what, the board isn't in charge here. I'm the one who's going to be the one that's in charge. I mean, obviously, you've got Daniel Loeb, who's the big mouthpiece on the board now, who effectuated a lot of the changes and was apparently one of her big uh, cheerleaders on this. And, and it's a splashy and, and dramatic move to put her in charge. But for her not to even be out there to introduce herself seems a little odd to me. What do you think? Yeah, I was, sort of, I, I was surprised when I, when I read that news come out. I thought she would be out there at least saying hello. I don't have much to say, but looking forward to doing it. And this is why I made this decision. I think that would right, go a long exactly. way in, in appeasing yeah. investors. Um, but it is what it is. And so Tim has done this before, being on the call by himself back in the fall in, in 3Q. <laughs> so... <laughs> Give him a raise. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Thanks, Ron, Ron Josie, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Well, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke much. testifying before Congress today, giving lawmakers a, a rundown, if you like, of what's left in his arsenal to help the economy.
former Fed Governor Wayne Angel joins us in a Fox Business exclusive to give Bernanke a piece of his mind of what he should be doing. Plus, Art Laffer says you better get ready because America is about to get socked by a triple whammy in the coming year. He'll join us to explain and possibly defend because others say the fiscal cliff might actually be a good thing. He doesn't. It's a first on Fox Business interview. Stay tuned. These days, more and more smart investors are turning to hard assets as a vital part of a portfolio. Now, Monaco makes it easy for you to own the world's most popular rare gold and silver coins and assemble just the right collection to enhance your investment portfolio. Introducing the Monaco Advantage, where qualified rare coin investors can purchase the world's most popular rare and modern bullion coins. Get the lowest prices in America guaranteed. A 10-day exchange privilege to give you the peace of mind you deserve. You'll also get the expertise of Monaco's Adam Crumb, noted author and world authority on rare coin investing. Call Monaco now at 1-800-663-1929 and we'll rush you these beautiful free guides to the world's most popular rare coins. Get the guaranteed lowest prices on the most popular gold and silver coins. Call Monaco now at 1-800-663-1929. That's 1-800-663-1929. Are your investments struggling due to the volatile stock market, the stagnant economy, and record low interest rates on savings? I would really like to keep more of my hard-earned money. Hi, I'm Rich Henyon. And I'm Bill Walsh. And we're the founders of Henyon & Walsh. We've been helping individual investors like you for over 20 years. If you are frustrated with your investments, then tax-free municipal bonds may be the solution. Their income is exempt from federal, and in many cases, state and local taxes. That means you get to keep more of your hard-earned money. Tax-free income? And as a leading independent specialist in municipal bonds, we now offer you this exclusive opportunity. Call right now and we'll send you a free bond guide that explains how investing in municipal bonds may help you get your investments back on track. For your free no-obligation bond guide, call 800-763-2763 now. Our bond guide is completely free. There's no cost to you. Call 800-763-2763 now. Another blow to the future. Senator Jerry Moran calls for a bold move to get investors' trust back. Then, an educated enemy, why some colleges are targeting our veterans and your tax dollars tonight. The five-day moving average just crossed above the 20. We're hitting new highs. The SPX is on my radar. And I'm on top of it all with Charles Schwab. I use Street Smart Edge and its tools like Screener Plus. I can custom build my own screens or use predefined ones to help me find possible trading opportunities quickly. I can also bounce my ideas off their trading specialists on the phone or face to face. And I can trade wherever I want, whenever I want. The kicker? I pay $8.95 a trade. That's a deal in any language. Hey. A breakout on a head and shoulders bottom. Now that's what I'm talking about. Open an account and trade up to six months commission free. Call 1-866-222-5638 and start trading today. Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke appeared on Capitol Hill today and once again teased investors on what the <laughs> Fed's future actions might be. Listen to what he said. Well, th we, there are a range of possibilities, and I, and I don't want to, you know, uh, give any signal that we're choosing one among well, but, the but, other. But, but, but what is the right? logical range includes different types of purchase programs. There you go. But one former Fed member says, well, this is exactly the type of tantalizing language the Fed should be avoiding. And he's got advice for the chairman on what the best course of action really is. With us in a Fox Business exclusive is former Fed Governor Wayne Angel. Wayne... Instead of teasing then, what should Mr. Bernanke be doing? Should he be saying absolutely no to QE3? Is that what you're saying? Well, sooner or later, the market is going to discover that the chairman is holding off uh, his announcements about QE3 because the chairman, frankly, does not want to get into the testing of it to see whether QE3 would do any good. So. Uh, he thinks that the Fed is better off 
having this kind of in his back pocket <clears throat> than to put it out there. <laughs> because if they put it out there, then people will see that it will simply increase the excess reserves in the banking system, and those mm -hmm. excess reserves are not going to be loaned out unless they reduce the rate of interest they pay for holding Thanks. sterile deposits yeah. at the mm -hmm. Fed. Well, that's your big thing. You have said that the real way to get banks to lend once again is to make the Fed less of an accommodator or an enabler by offering them 25 basis points to park their money instead of lending it. But we haven't seen since you came here and very passionately spoke about that. We all thought it was a great idea. We've seen no move on that. Why doesn't he see that by doing that, he's enabling banks to simply leave their money with the Federal Reserve instead of lending it to people? I don't know. It's, uh, it's a kind of a fear on this staff at the Federal Reserve's part of doing any tinkering, so they don't want to do any tinkering, and so they leave that 25 basis points there without thinking why we put the 25 basis points on in the first place. We put it on during a not much different situation in which we had the holding of reserves uh, w was handicapped by what we call the reserve requirement tax. And that reserve requirement tax is what drove the euro dollar market and, 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 and interest rates in, in, in euro dollars uh, rather than interest rates on treasury bills. Right, okay, let me, let me jump in and just say this, Wayne. Uh, let me stick up for Ben Bernanke. Lou Dobbs and I seem to be the only ones who do this on a regular basis, but he is in a difficult position. I, I respect the fact that he's not coming out and saying, yes, we'll do it. They've already nearly quadrupled the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve over the past couple of years by print, doing all kinds of quantitative easing, etc. Maybe he really isn't ready. Wayne? Well, I don't know. I, I, I think what he's waiting for is he's, he's waiting to say that we do have this we can do, but rather than recognizing that the slow economy is really due to the hangover from that housing price crash. And house prices crashed largely because the Greenspan Fed pumped too much money in and drove house prices higher. They had a little help from Congress and the Fannie and Freddie. But nevertheless, the Fed had a lot of responsibility in that housing inflation, which became a housing deflation. Mm -hmm. And that housing deflation results in a reduced wealth effect, and that's what's holding up consumer spending. But to his point, Mr. Bernanke said today that, look, the economy is essentially stuck in the mud, just not bad enough to warrant more action by the Fed, and so we're caught in this cycle. What can the Fed do to move it forward? Well, not much, frankly, mm. uh, but I think the chairman wants to maintain the illusion that he's got something big in his back pocket if he needs to use it. But I think the market would be far better off to understand that uh, QE3 is not going to be out there. And, and if it were, it wouldn't really help anyway. It would simply drive right. uh, the balance sheet higher and excess reserves uh, banks at the Federal Reserve would, he, would just grow larger. Well, he did say uncertainty about the efficacy is why he's not doing it. Wayne, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for asked, having me. Anytime. Wayne Angel, former Federal Reserve governor, always telling it like Always. Well, we told you yesterday about a group that said we 